Okay. Should be able to see me in a few seconds here. Hey, buddy. So he's actually greeting me at the gate right now. I'm pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I see him walking. Okay, I just saw you come into view. So you just got to the gate. That's good. Hey, guys. Okay. Well, I'm a little bit of a late start, everybody, but thought we'd experiment a little bit. Mystery dug himself a good mud pit for the last day or two. So last night we brought him out to the field so he could dry off and run around. He was really excited to be out there and see his buddies overnight. Um, Brandon's here with us. We weren't sure that it'd be an easy task to catch mystery. I was pretty convinced that he'd be running around like crazy, but he's actually just standing here with me. Very Hanging good. Out. That's excellent. Yeah, he's, that bonding process is taking place, um, and he wants to be with somebody. He's, you know, got a little, a little anxiety there. He's pacing back and forth across uh, the uh, fence line, and he wants to, he does not want to be alone. So uh, you're not a horse. You're second best, but he'll take you. Huh. I'm so shocked that he's not running around. I don't know why I should be shocked, but I guess he's getting more comfortable. Yeah, he's getting more comfortable with you, too. And, and uh, quite frankly, I'm a little surprised also that he is, uh, you know, come right up to you. And uh, I assume you're, I can't see real well, but I assume you got a halter on him or getting a halter on him. Just about to. I thought I'd hang out with him for a my face. I yes. just want to be kind of non-invasive here. Since yep, no, that's very good. And I don't think you have any, you don't have any grain or anything with you, right? No. Nope. Okay. It'll always help to reinforce that in the worst case scenario. You know, if he was to run off uh, and say, no, I don't want to be caught, then it's always better to have a little something there. Uh, I like to use that. That's the only time with the exception of some uh, trader training, that I use grain. Uh, and it's not as a an enticement, but more as a reward for uh, getting to do whatever you want to with them. Oh, good job. I'm, I'm watching a close-up. And you got, oh, yeah, I've got the rope over his neck and behind his ears. Outstanding. God, that's really good of him. Good boy. Would you like to explain, Brandon, why... You don't treat that often. This is something I feel very similar to you about. Yeah, um, the reason why is that if you if you were to present him with, a, say, a bucket of grain, uh, most horses like grain. So using that, and that's what I use, uh, various different types anyway, um, if you hold that bucket out and say, here, here's some grain, and it's all about behavior. It's about manipulation, like we talked um, the other day. If you do that and you let them get uh, a bite of grain, they may be content with just a bite of grain, and then they'll they'll stretch their neck out, they'll stretch their lips out, and they'll reach to get just what they can get without being touched and caught. And then they'll get a mouthful, and then they'll take off. I've seen that happen with poor-behavioured horses. So in, in order to stop that, or what you just taught them to do is to uh, be rewarded for just showing up and sticking their head in the bucket, but not be caught. So they, we've just instilled some really poor behavior in them. So if we have that bucket there and allow them to come up to the bucket and a, uh, give them a chance to see what you got, come up to you and let you put your hands on them. And then once your hands are on them and you have the rope around their neck, just as you did when you, when you haltered them, and put the halter on, then you let them have it, then it's a reward. It's not, uh, an, uh, you're enticing them, and then you're rewarding for them for letting you touch them and put that, that halter on. Otherwise, the reward before was, I get to taste it, and then I get to be free. Okay. So it's a, it's a big, big difference. It's, it's seemingly small in, in uh, what you do and how you do it, uh, and you're really trying to get to the same goal, but the horse can then make the decision to leave you and still be rewarded. Where this way, 
they're rewarded for you handling it. The huge outcome difference with a very small change in how you do it. That's a really good point. I I treat my horse sometimes, but it's always random. Um, you know, I don't I don't overdo it, and and some people do, and their horses are fine, but some people treat their horses, and they're really super pushy. Um, invading a space. And I think that comes from exactly what you're talking about, just not having a real good association for the treat um, and a reason why they're getting it. Oh, boy. Yeah, no, that's that's right. And, and I think there's a, uh, there's a type of training that uses the treat as a reward, um, but as long as you are there with the treat, they may or may not may not do what you want. And I think for trick training, it works very well. Uh, because they, they also, they get the treat after they do it or during the time that they're teaching them, uh, mm -hmm. in stages, it's still a reward. And so that's, that's something that is, uh, it, it's just a slight change, but I've also seen those horses not perform unless they get the treat. And, and I'm like, you know, I like to have that, that, um, air of unpredictability. It's, I call it the gambler's addiction. Uh, if you sat at a slot machine and every time you pulled that, that handle on that thing, you were going to win money. Outside of it being a financial benefit, there's really not that addictive ben uh, benefit to it because it's predictable. And that's part of the thing with with the gambling uh, addiction is that it is unpredictable, and that's why it is such has such a, a tight hold on on some personalities. So if you can do the same thing with a horse, and I found this to work very well, that if you are very unpredictable about it. Uh, just like today, if you were to just do just this little bit and then put him away, there's really nothing for him to really have a problem with on on uh, being caught because he's not really having to work very hard. If you rode him every day super, super hard, then he's going to go, you know what, I don't think I really need to do this. Yeah. Well, on that note, I was going to ask you, um, well, I guess I'd, I'd like to tell you a little bit about um, my session I had with Mystery after you left. Um, I've only really handled him in depth once, and we talked about the last day you were here. He was, he was getting kind of overstimulated and checking out, and I really felt that way about him. So... Um, I felt like he kind of just, well, maybe you can explain this a little bit. Um, partly I felt like when I was working with him, he was really stressed and not settled in here, overstimulated. Um, but also I noticed he learned so darn quickly. He's a really smart horse. You saw it when we were in the round pen when you were here. He's so smart, and he was doing everything. I and mean, I was kind of having a hard time figuring out how to challenge him more without overstressing him. So I gave him a couple of days off, and this is the first time, other than really just hanging out by a stall and moving him last night, that I've, I've challenged him mentally. But is there a way, I mean, do you have an explanation for that? And then second to that, do you have other ideas of, Maybe not putting him in the round pen every time, or something I can do out here in the field, no stress, just to switch things up and not stress him out. Yeah, your your observation is is very good, um, and and yes, he he is he's quite smart. He learns quickly, and he also can get bored very easily. So we want to be careful and not uh, bore him because when they get bored, then we'll start causing behavior problems because. You know how you feel when you're bored. You want to check out, and you're like, why am I doing this? This is stupid. Uh, and they feel the same way. No, it's very, very real for them. So you giving them a couple of days off is exactly what he needed. Uh, even though he's not in the real time of being trained, I can't help but think that they have some time to decompress after that. And we worked him quite a bit, you know, early uh, as a new horse. So... It, the more you work him, the less you have to spend doing what you were doing because he's already learned it. Um, mm -hmm. What you could do is change it up a little bit. 
and we'll get to that later on. But uh, outside of outside of some of that round crow work, you need to keep progressing on it. Everything you do, you need to progress because when he when he gets it and he gets it well, uh, then it's time to move on. And you can still move on when he quite, hasn't quite got it because you can do multiple things at a time, and that's what keeps it fresh. If you uh, you know, we started working him on basically his speed and turns. That's really all we worked with him. And then you can start to work with him with not coming to you, which we, we touched on lightly. But then we can start working beyond that on taking one step and stop or three steps and stop all the way around. There's a, a lot of stuff we can do with turning on his hinds and fours, which we touched on, um, and wasn't really good, but you can do it without it. You know, just keep progressing on a lot of these things that we need to have him do. Now, the stuff that you're doing, like, right now is really – it's not so passive, uh, and I'm, I'm a real big believer in passive training where you let that horse train themselves. You set it up the situation where they are being stimulated, but nobody's around but themselves, and they learn through it. And then we'll get to that part when we sack uh, later on when it's, when it's ready for some more desensitization, uh, that portion of it. But like what you're doing now, playing with him, touching him, uh, I wouldn't worry about uh, pushing too far. Just let him be with you, pick his feet up, put, touch that animal everywhere on his body. That's the best thing that you can do right now to strengthen that bond and let him know that you're not going to hurt him. And I mean everywhere, be up between his legs, his hind legs, uh, under his tail, uh, the dock of his tail. Everywhere you can get your hands on him, touch him. Uh, you may need to someday. Uh, if he's injured or uh, you have to get something off of him, say he's wrapped up in a rope or got himself in some wire, and you may need to get him up in a sensitive area that he normally you haven't touched. Now you've got a problem because you're beginning an initial desensitization when you really have an issue that you need to resolve. So you, you, if you prepare for that ahead of time, that's what makes this horse nice and calm later on. And this is something I can switch up as far as putting it in the round pen or doing it out here. Um, do you have any opinion on working them in their own home? I guess. Well, if I were to just come out like I am now, hang out with them out here, touch them all over, and then let them go, um, and never leave his his pasture. What do you think about that? I think it's really good because you're putting less pressure on him, uh, and he's still getting work. Uh, you're not taking him into the round corral. And to do some of this real passive work, this is this is super passive. It's really nice. Um, it's it relaxes him. I could, once in a while I can see him moving his his uh, mouth. I think, uh, but he's he's quiet. He's calm, and he's still bonding with you. And in fact, it, it looks to me like he's enjoying the way he's holding his head. He's kind of holding it up, and he's just relaxed. Like oh, that feels good when you do that. You know that that kind of a, a, a body language. So. The more you can do with that in his environment is something different than taking him in and starting to be more formal about it. So, yes, very good job. It's, it's uh, a good spot to do that in. Uh, giving him time off, changing what you're doing uh, is all uh, something that he needs. You've got to watch him. It isn't necessarily following our syllabus or what we want to do with him. All of this training depends on what he's doing, how he's how he's taking it, and sometimes the, they will resist us, and we'll go, hmm, boy, this isn't really going well, real well. You have to discern: is it is it because he's sticky, because he's not getting the lesson, or because he doesn't want to? And so those are things that we'll we'll look at later. Oh yeah, there's I saw him chewing there when you're working on his back, so he's he's really liking that turning towards you. Excellent, he's rounding his body towards you. That's good. I guess. Um what you just said about him being sticky, that's, that's exactly how I felt after you left and I put him in the round pen. And I remember you mentioning, um, you know, you may have an idea of teaching a horse to turn on the forehand and then you end up just bonding with him or you just don't always end up doing what you plan to do so you shouldn't go into it with too much of an agenda. But... In that situation the other day where I felt like he was really sticky and stressed, um, I didn't really feel like we accomplished much. And 
although I put him away when he was a little bit more relaxed, I just kind of felt like it wasn't as, I mean, maybe it was beneficial, but I didn't see any sort of big aha moment. Um, so what do you do when they're stressed? You just put them away, even though they are sticky and stressed? And just yeah, leave it the day? That's a good question. It's like, okay, how far do I really push them before I put them away? Because I think everything needs to be about learning and needs to be about complying with what you ask for. And if you feel them get real sticky and it's because they're maybe overworked, have them do something that you want them to do. And if it, if it means going back to something basic where you're just walking one direction and stopping and turning, that's great. And then put them away. Uh, and, and that's the, that's the kind of the, the fun thing about this is that you're right. You go in with an agenda, but you have to be very flexible about it. And you may not work on anything you want because at that point the horse doesn't need it or he needs something different. And so when you get a, a little bit further along, he's going to get uh, resentful of you. Uh, that's, that's just normal because you're going to be asking a lot of him and he'll see you come and he goes, oh God, I got to work again. And so he will at that point go, you know what? I don't want to do this. And you're not going to make me do this. So whether he's sticky or he's just resistant, that's the difference. Right now, he's, it's too early for him to really be resistant as much as he is just sticky and overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. And either case, you really want to, you want to work him. And if he's, and if he's just upset and resistant, you have to work him through that and you got to continue to work him and then he will comply. And we'll get to that point where he'll do that. He'll get to it and he'll work through that when you make him, when you make him continue to work. Uh, and then he'll get to the point where he, what I, what I call rolls for you or rolls over or gives in to you. Uh, and he'll go, okay, yeah, I don't like it, but I'm, I need to do it anyway because now it's, it's, taking the, the path of least resistance. Either way, you need to work them and get them to do something you want. Just don't put them away without them having to comply with you. Otherwise, they start to train you that if I'm snotty or nasty or sticky, that's all I have to do and you'll quit. And you I start to make that behavior. You really have to be attentive to the details of their body language and, and make that decision wisely. Boy. Yes, absolutely. 100% of the time, you have to watch their behavior. It's something that you just do in the background all the time. Uh, you've got your agenda, what you want, but you have to you have to watch, you know, the way they move a tail, the way they move, the way they pick their feet up, the way they they uh, hold their mouth, their ears, their eyes, the, the stiffness or tightness of their muscle. All of those things you have to watch, and it's all background. It's, uh, that's running in your background all the time because you're assessing this horse. He's doing that to you because he does it to other horses. That's you're speaking their language and you're becoming ingrained and, and involved in their language so that you feed back the right thing to him and that you are also receiving uh, the, the information he's given you. Well, this is really great information. It's making me feel a little bit better about the other day. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, no. (laughs) (laughs) Well, good, I'm needed. That's funny. Uh, You know, one of the things that you want to do, and I I mentioned this before, and I'll I'll keep coming back to this, is that uh, if something isn't working right, I look at myself first. What what am I doing wrong? What am I miscommunicating at? Am I I doing this correctly? Am I uh, giving communication with... with, uh, mixed signals. I mean, all of these self-evaluative things that you have to do to get to ensure that he's doing it right. And if you can do that in a very quick, uh, you know, kind of an evaluation, and you go, you know what, I'm doing everything right, it's him, then go ahead and, and then you have to, to work around them and start to, to change that behavior a little bit more. I see your camera. I'm looking about the, the last or the uh, uh, hind end half of him. You're out of the picture to the right. Uh, so we just need to update our, our camera a little bit. I think Jamie might be probably preoccupied with something else that came, <laughs> that came up. So, um, yeah, you know, just because you're out there with him right now and you're not doing a whole lot to him, it doesn't look like it, you are. And when you asked about, you know, it didn't felt like, feel like you did anything with him, if you if you don't feel like you're doing anything but he's responded to you, 
that's the nature of, of good, solid foundational training. And, and uh, as I said before, w- when you're training correctly or doing a good job of training, it's like watching paint dry. <laughs> you know, it's and it should be. It's not very exciting because uh, nothing happens, but you're getting behavioral changes, and you want those behavioral changes without all, without all the drama. And uh, less drama is better. Yeah, I think I think about the king of greedy. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, sometimes I when they're doing well, like right now, I feel really good right now, just doing a little bit of this and then letting them go, but. There are other days where I'll think, you know, with any horse, oh, they're doing so well, they're so calm. I want to push them beyond their limit, not consciously pushing them beyond their limits, but just because you want to see that improvement, even though they may not be ready. I've definitely been guilty of that. So it's a good reminder. <laughs> I like putting a name on it. No, and, and that's right. And, and you know what? Being greedy is a good thing to a point. But you gotta also do that self evaluation, yeah, because you're you, you're the self proclaimed uh, queen of greedy, and I am the king, and and there is no doubt I I have pushed a horse too far, and then you get you have to go back immediately right away and fix what you, what you've done, and you may have to go right back to the most simple basic thing that you know that they can do and ask them to do, and, and they're resentful of you because you've pushed them too far, but you've got to do that, and and so yes, you're you're experienced in pushing too far because they are working so well and, and you know, it's, it's, it's the way it is. Uh, recognizing that you have to stop at a certain point, uh, you get better at that. Oh, he's doing really well. I see him just kind of standing at your, standing at your shoulder when you're walking. That's great. This is all really good stuff. Really good job with him. You're going to see something funny in a second. Okay. <laughs> I just um, put myself on his right side and then he's I don't know if he actually purposely nudged me or ran into me, but he got this look like, "Gosh, that was confusing." I should get over there. <laughs> I, yep, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it now. I'm watching it. Oh yeah. So, if you you know that he likes you on on his near side and you're on the off side now, so he's a little uncomfortable, and you can tell he's just a little stiffer about how he moves. Yeah. Heads up a little bit more. His ears are pinned back a little bit more, like, mm, I don't like this. So spend a lot of time doing this on this side. It's not what he wants, but it's what he needs, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask you, are you a horse trainer? Yes. Why are you a horse trainer? Every time you're a horse, you're a horse, you're training him, and he doesn't know it. He doesn't know you're not a trainer. That's right. And there's three possible outcomes, right? Make him worse, make him the same, or make him better. You got it. You absolutely got it. So when you when you recognize it like this, you see he needs a little bit more work on this, and you are training him. And you don't want him to train you. You are training him. Really good job. I I am so pleased. You're doing a great job. Really good job. He's starting to get. Yeah. I, what I was just gonna say. This is now he's at this point where he's a little stiff. He's a little sticky, uh, but he's starting to move a little bit better for you. What I would do, if I were you, is is touch him a little bit more on that side, uh, working and not working in the where you're kind of pushing his his uh, hind end around and turning him on his fours. Now go the other way and push his fours around where he's turning on the hinds. And if he does that successfully a few times, I would quit him for the day. Okay. Because you you can feel him get to that point where he's like, mm, I don't like this, but I'm I'm complying. So push a little bit more. Don't just do the same thing. Now push the opposite direction. And then if he can climb the wall, there you go. He did it, and then immediately started licking and chewing. Good, yes. He's processing. Yeah, I see. There you go. He's kind of doing a a half pass to the rear. There you're moving around. Good. you got to stay a little bit more ahead of his shoulder. Yeah, I end up getting in a spot where I feel like I could be kicked. (laughs) Yeah, and you might have to just pull him, pull him back a little bit and get up there closer with his shoulder to your left shoulder and uh, more with your right shoulder closer to his jaw and so that you're, you're going to have to walk faster and in front of him to get him to, to uh, kind of come back. Oh, that works. 
There you go. You're starting to move it. That's better. Yeah. yeah. There. Now you you feel the difference? Yeah. Huge. Good. It's just so crazy how much of a difference it makes. Just moving your shoulders an inch changes everything. It means everything. You're exactly right. Okay. And look how much better he's moving. And he, he, he kind of has an idea that it's better to do this anyway because he doesn't necessarily want you on that side. So knowing that, he should be able to move away from you easier than he does towards you, and he did. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, look at it. He's licking, chewing. I think I saw that. Yeah, he's bending around me a lot better. Yes. He has me. Good boy. Okay, did you just see that head bob? I, I just saw a head. He just dropped his head in a head bob. I missed it. Okay, you were petting his shoulder. Yeah, so, so every time you, you can't see his head, kind of keep an eye on his neck. And, you know, obviously that's going to give you an idea what he did, but he did a nice drop of the head uh, is in a, in a uh, compliance or submission type of behavior. Really, really good. If I was you, he, he's reaching around. I see him smelling your shoulder, and you're petting on his shoulder. He just, now he just picked his head up for something outside of you. He's kind of leaning into you. This is the perfect time to end this lesson. You feel the difference in, in how he's behaving now on this side. Yeah, this is the first time I've felt taller than him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. No, this is, I think if you push anything more than beyond this, this is just a little taste. And this is what I'm talking about with uh, some of this behavior. So, you know, don't worry about too much. Just do more of this passive stuff on his side, uh, on this side, because he needs to be comfortable with you touching him everywhere and uh, doing what we need him to do and be happy there. He was really happy to get you on that side. Now, the other thing you can do is just work to the other side of him one more time. And you might have to let him go already because I see you're starting to uh, unbuckle his halter. Well, I purposely put the rope on him so I could go to the other side. Oh, good. You're, you're way Well, I tell you what, great minds think alike. There you go. Nice job. You know, he really didn't resist that much, did he? No, he's Good. actually turned into me. Yeah, he's getting more He's getting more familiar with you. So, you know, if you just keep doing this for, you know, another week, uh, he'll he'll be great. And, um, you know, it'll be kind of nice to see how he looks, uh, you know, when Doc uh, Richardson comes out, takes a look at his teeth, and uh, tells us what he does. Now, when you walk away from him towards the gate, he should follow you. I would be surprised if he didn't. Here he comes. pretty good horse. He's kind of, I noticed when I caught him, he put me on his far side, and now I'm on his near side, but he, he'll take a step and turn his head or walk directly behind me. Oh, good boy. Did you hear that sigh? I did. I, I could hear that, yes. Big release. He's been, he's been pent up this whole time, even though you've been making uh, really good uh, progress with him. He still was, you know, uncomfortable. And now that you have let him go, you're you're completely letting him relax. He can leave you if you want, and then he just does that nice big sigh, just a nice release of of uh, of pressure and energy and mental mental uh, uh, relaxation. Very good, very good job. Good job with him. Well, thanks so much, Brandon. This was um, a lot more surprising than I thought it was going to be. In easy to catch. <laughs> yeah, I, I am. I'm very pleased. I'm, I'm quite frankly, I'm a little surprised he was as easy as he was. But you know, I think it would be a different story if he was out with the herd at large. And I think yeah. we might find that when he gets comfortable out there, he's like, you know what? I've got some buddies here. I really don't think I'm feeling the need to work today. And so we'll have to work through that as well. What I would do if if I were you, because uh, we want to try to train him to be manipulated is, you know, go get maybe a, just a double handful of grain and bring it to him, let him have it, and then turn him loose. And, you know, you don't even have to, you, you just get your hands on him. You don't even have to halter him. Okay. Do that. Yeah, because that way we, we want him to kind of, we want to build a little addiction into him for uh, some treats after the fact. And, then, again, I've only used this for, for catching. And then as a reward when I am early in my training, uh, loading into a small trailer. 
Great job. Sharon over here. Well, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate all your help, and it was a pleasant surprise to have you on the phone with us today. Oh, you bet. No, it's good. I'll uh, uh, probably maybe next week we'll just tune in and do the same thing and uh, see what else you've worked with and any other kind of passive training uh, stuff that you've got. And most of this is, is all about bonding right now, and I think that is the absolute most important thing to do because we're just we're just getting familiar with you, and, and then uh, we'll start the more of a formal training in the spring. Well, that works for me. We're all right. Gonna... Okay. All right. We'll... we'll... We'll let it, see you guys later, and then uh, we'll get a hold of each other next week and do the, probably the same thing. So have a great week. You too. Take care. All right. Good job, and good. Uh, hoping everybody who was on this got to see it. And, and uh, uh, if you have any questions next time while we're on, then just jump on that horse chat and let us know, and we'll try to answer your questions. So great. bye bye. All right. Bye. Okay. Okay.